This video that you're about to watch is from my Omni Model course. If you want to get access to the entire course, you can get access to it for free. Yes, for free by going to my website at allentrades.me. The link to the website will also be in the description below. So without any further ado, let's get into the video. All right, so we just went over the different types of markets. Now we're going to talk about candlestick charts and how to view them and what they are basically. So I split this video up into two sections. First, I'm going to go over candlesticks, what they are, what they look like, how to read them. And then we're going to transfer over into a full tutorial of the platform that I use called TradingView. So I'm going to go through that platform from the very basics of how to create an account to the very advanced tools that you're able to use on that platform. So without any further ado, let's get into candlesticks. So what is a candlestick? So price is printed on the chart in the form of candlesticks. Candlesticks tell you the open, high, low, and close during a given time frame. So if we look at the picture, we have this green candle, which is a depiction of a bullish candle. A bullish candle basically is a candle that closed higher than when it opened. So a candlestick has two parts to it. We have the body, which is the rectangular shape. And then we have the wick, sometimes referred to as tails, which is the little things at the top and the bottom of the body. The top of the wick is called the high and the bottom of the wick is called the low or bottom of the tail is called the low. And then we have the rectangular shape, which is the body. In this case, since it's a bullish candle, the open is the bottom of the body and the close is the top of the body because it closed higher than it opened. Now, vice versa, if we look to the right, the black candle, it's an example of a bearish candle. So the high and the low are still the same. So the high of the wick is still the high, the low of the wick is still the low. But for the bodies, now the open and closed are switched because it's a bearish candle, which means that it closed lower than when it opened. So the top of the candle in this case is the open and the bottom of the candle in this case is the close. Now, when we go to the trading view chart and we look at different charts, you can look at different time frames and the time frames can vary from anything you want. You can look at a one second chart all the way to a monthly chart. And what does that mean? That means each candlestick that you see on the chart represents that time frame. So if we were looking at a daily chart, every green candle that you see would represent a bullish day. Every black candle that you see will represent a bearish day. Now, when we go to the platform, you can customize your chart in so many different ways. You can make a bearish or bullish candle any color that you want. The reason why it's green and black on this screen is because that's the colors that I set for myself. But you will see that when we go to the TradingView platform or when you sign up for your account, the default colors is actually green and red. So bullish candles are green and bearish candles are red. I like my bearish candles to be black. It just looks better to me on the chart. But and so hopefully now you got a basic overview of what a candlestick is and how to view it. So now let's transition over to the screen and go through a in-depth trading view tutorial. Hey, so I am on the trading view website. I just simply went in the browser tradingview.com and this is what their homepage looks like at the time of this recording. So quickly we're going to go to the pricing. So for the non-professional, this is what most people are. Most of you guys aren't professional traders. You guys aren't paying fees and registered professional traders. So these are the three plans that they offer. We have the essential, the plus, and the premium. Right now, I am currently subscribed to the premium. The reason why it's telling me to try for 30 days is because I'm not signed into my account right now, but I am a premium member. They had a really good deal on Black Friday, so I just paid for the entire year. It was like soft, so I just went ahead and became a premium member. But the main things to focus on as far as what's the difference between the three is first the charts per tab. So as you can see, you can have two charts for the essential, four charts for the plus and eight for the premium. This is basically how many different charts you can have per tab. It's pretty straightforward. Then the other thing that is important are the indicators that you can have on your chart. So these are like things that help you automate certain processes in your trading and I don't use as many as 25, but I do, however, use more than five. I usually have more than five on my chart. So um, the plus could also be a good option if you guys are considering 
buying a membership for a trading view. It is not um, essential to become, to have a paid membership. It's not like you don't need to have the premium membership in order to learn how to trade and make money. However, because I can't afford it, I am a premium member. Um, besides those two things, that's the only thing that's really important. Now, the historical bars when we are back testing 20K is nice to have, but usually having 10K, that's enough data for you to go back in price action and learn on the uh, charts. And besides that, that is probably the only three things that I use or that I consider as important between the three, you can go and look at all the other features that they have and make a decision on what you would like to have. But right now, what I'm going to do is sign into my account, go on to the actual chart and show you all the tools and different things that you can do with trading view. So now once you're signed in, if you are still on the homepage, all you want to do is go to products and go to super charts. And once you click on that, it's going to load your chart. So right now it looks crazy because I have my presets and stuff. What I'm going to do is go to a brand new layout. So let's uh, create a new layout and we're going to call this the YouTube or the course, I'm sorry, tutorial. So now when you open your chart, it's going to look similar to this. Now your candles are probably red and green. So I'm going to change that real quick, change the color theme back to... Uh, so this is probably what your chart looks like identical. Let's close that. So you can see we have our candlesticks, right? This would be a bearish candlestick. These green candles would be bullish candles. So red is bearish, green is bullish. Now we have these on the chart. This is your volume profile. I do not use this at all. So what I'm gonna do is just click on any of these bars and then just hit delete on your keyboard and it will go away like that. Now let's start on the right hand side of the chart. So we have this right here. This is where you are going to have like your watch list and have all your symbols that you would like to trade. So as you can see, these are all the symbols that I personally like to trade. I have my currencies, I have my stock indices, I have commodities, I have bonds and I have crypto. And these are all the different ones within those individual asset classes that I personally like to trade. Now, how would you add something to this? Let's say you don't have any of these on the chart, which you probably don't if you're starting out. All you have to do is hit the plus button up here and you can see they sum off. Or if you know the symbol already, then you just type it in. So if we wanted to add the Euro USD, we would just type in Euro dash USD. And then it's probably a Forex. So you want to go to Forex. And then now we have our different brokers for Forex. So if you're trading on the OANDA broker, then you want to find the Euro USD one for OANDA. And I'm not sure why. There it goes. So like you have Euro USD for Oanda, you have Euro USD for FXCM, um, you have Euro USD for Forex.com. So whichever broker you're trading on for Forex, you want to click on that. Now, if you're trading futures, there aren't individual brokers. The price is all the same. So if we wanted to trade oil, for example, which is CL and then click on futures, it'll just be all one. And this is the exchange that oil trades on, which is the New York Max. So let's say you wanted the oil one, you click on it, boom and it will bring it down on the bottom. Now I already have oil on my chart, so it, you can see it didn't add it on the bottom, but let's say I wanted to add this, for example, if I click on it, you can see it, it pops up at the bottom. So that is how you add a symbol onto your chart. Now here, this is the alerts. This is, let's say, so let's say you want it to, for example, when price gets to 79 up here, you would want an alert to come to your computer or your phone or tablet, wherever you have your TradingView set up. And a cool thing about TradingView is you can be signed in on multiple devices. So you can be signed in on your computer, your iPad or tablet and your phone. And if you have notifications set up on all those devices, when price hits that level and you have an alert set up on that level, then you would get a notification to all those devices all at once. So the way that you can set um, an alert to right click on that level. So right now, just right click on your mouse and then you hit add alert. This message will pop up. You can create a message that comes with the alert. So let's say this level meant something to you, some type of key level, or you wanted to buy or sell when it gets to that level. So you can write a message. So when the notification pops up on your phone, you're reminded as to why that level was important to you. And then you just hit create. And then once you create it, it'll pop up here, right there, the alert. And then once it goes there, then you will get a notification to your device. 
Now moving on, we have the object tree. So the object tree is basically any symbols, indicators that you draw on your chart. Once you draw them on your chart, they will pop up here. So we're going to talk more about the symbols when we get to the left side of the chart, but I'm just going to put any symbol on here. So if I draw a line, now you see that trend lines up here. If I draw another one, now it's there. Cool thing is you can rename them. So if this trend line meant something to you, whatever the case is, you can rename each trend line. You can also put them into groups. So if I click on this one and then I hold command because I'm on a Mac. So if you hold command and then you can right click or you can hit this button up here and they'll put them in a the folder. So let's say these levels were one minute, um, because we're on one minute chart, one minute key levels, right? then you can name that folder one minute key levels. So let's delete these off. And that is the object tree. Now I don't use anything else on this side. The only three things I use are these. Now, if you wanted to see all the um, like no messages, if you're chatting with other members on TradingView, then you can use these down here. But the only three things I use on this side of the window are these first three buttons. Now I'm moving on to the canvas, the chart itself. So let's get rid of this. So how do we customize this, right? So let's right click on the chart and let's go to settings. Another way you can do it is going up here. This is another button to get to chart settings, but you can also right click on the chart and go to settings. So now let's start with the symbol. So if you wanted to change like the color of your candles, then you would do it here. So for what I like to do is I like to have my up close candles, my bullish candles to be green and my down close candles or bearish candles to be black. So that is what I'm going to do here. So the body is going to be green and the down close candles are going to be black. And then I do the same thing for the wick. So the wick is going to be green and the down close candles are going to be black. Now, this is for the session. We have electronic trading hours or regular trading hours. This is only going to be applicable to the futures markets. And all it's basically doing is electronic trading hours is basically 23 seven and regular trading hours is only when the New York stock exchange is open, which is from 9 30 AM to 4 15 PM. And then obviously we have our time zone. So you can set it to whatever you want to set it to always remember though, that the charts and all the times that I talk about when it comes to price is going to be in New York or Eastern standard time. And then this, also is applicable to futures. So every three months we have rollover or we have a new contract that starts. So if you want to adjust for the contract automatically and not have to do it manually, then you just hit this button and it'll adjust for you. Notice how the chart didn't really change because at the time of this recording, it's May. So if I was to do this the second or third week of June, then there'll be a drastic change because that is one of those three months of the year where we roll over and change contracts. And remember that's only applicable for the futures market. Moving on to the status line. This is going to be up here. So keep your eye on the top left. So we have the logo and I toggle that off. You can see the logo disappears, toggle it back on the logo for crude oil pops up. We can have the title. So now the actual name crude oil disappears, toggle it back on. Then it shows we have the open market status. So Right now you can tell it's 2.16 p.m. So the market is open. So it is green. If I was to take that off, then you wouldn't see that anymore. Now, if the market was closed, then this would be show up or this will show up as red, which and it'll say market closed. Then we have the OHLC the values. This stands for the open, high, low, close. So for every one minute candle, if I hover over each individual one, if you look up here, you have the open, high, low, and close. So notice how when I go over different candles, these numbers in the top left are changing. So it's telling you the open, high, low, and close of that individual, in this case, one minute candle. If I was to change it to a daily chart, then it will be the open, high, low, close on whatever day that you're hovered over. And so if I toggle that on and off, you can see it going away and coming back. And so this is, these are the things I like to keep on my chart. Um, personally, I don't even keep the open market status. Like I know what time of day it is and I know that it is open or not open. Um, we have others that you can have on here, the ticker, ticker and description. A lot of 
different things that you can um, customize. I'll let you guys play around with it and see what you like on your chart. But this is how I like to have my chart for the status line. Now going to the scales and the lines. I don't really mess with any of the stuff up here. I let everything stay auto. Um, there's really nothing on here that I like to touch. The only thing that I change depending on what I'm trading, like what I'm trying to say is depending on whether I'm ready to take a trade or if I'm just watching the market or not and want to set alerts easily or set um, trade limits, buy and sell limits easily, then I will have this flux button open. So if I have this toggled, now when I hover over it, you see this plus button, this will show. If I take it off, there's no plus button. And the cool thing about the plus button is you can go to any level, hit the plus button, and it allows you to add an alert, but it also allows you to place limit in stop orders or draw a horizontal line, which I think is pretty cool. That's pretty much the only thing that I touch on this um, scales and lines. Moving on to the canvas. So this is how you change the background the color and just customize it to how you like it. So how do I personally like it? You don't have to copy it, but I'm just gonna show you guys what I like to do. I like to just do a solid one shade lighter. That's actually too light. So I already have my color down here. So I like to just do one shade a little bit darker. I'm sorry, I know I said lighter, a little bit darker than white. It just, it just makes it a little bit easier on the lines. And then for the grid lines, I don't like to have any grid lines. So I take them all off. If you want to have them on, you can have them on, but I like to take the grid lines off. Now moving on to the crosshair, you can change this color to whatever you like. This is basically just a line that shows when you hover over the chart, you can change it to any color you like. I personally don't change it. I like to keep it where it's at. And then for the scales, you can change the size of the text to fit your liking. And then Everything else, I don't really pretty much touch. I keep the margins the same, the navigation the same, and the pane the same. So the only thing that I really touch is just the background, and I take the grid lines off. Now moving on to the trading tab. So if you are signed into your broker, and how do you do that? Trading panel down here. If you click on trading panel, there's a lot of brokers that you can trade with. I'm going to take this off real quick. That you can trade with directly. Oh, wow. I realized I didn't hit save. It's all good. So there's a lot of brokers that you can trade with directly on TradingView. So if any of your brokers are supported through TradingView, all you have to do is sign into your broker and you can place orders directly on TradingView with it. So what I'm going to do right now, because I didn't hit save when I was making all the changes, what I'm going to do is go out to one of my layouts that I have already. So I'm going to go to currencies or actually... I'm going to go to index features. That's the one I use the most. Okay. So now I'm on my index features tab and you can see now this is how I personally like to look at my charts. If you see my screenshots, they probably look a little similar to this. I like to have more of a gray background and the candles are going to be green and black. It's a little bit easier on the eye. After you spend a lot of time looking at charts, you want to make it as easy as possible when looking at these candlesticks, right? So let's go back to the tab that we were on, the trading. So I was telling you guys how if you sign into your trading um, broker, you can try directly on trading view. And if you have your buy and sell buttons clicked, so we look up here, toggle it on and off, they shows. You can place your orders by hitting buy or sell. If you have an instant order placement, then you can directly place your order. So what I mean by that was if I wanted to buy, then... As soon as I hit the button, it'll automatically get me into the trade. If I had this toggle off, then once I hit buy, a window will pop up and it'll allow me to either refine my levels or just confirm that I want to buy. Um, if you think you are the type of person that may click on this button on accident, then you definitely want to have this toggled off so that when you do hit buy, that other window pops up and you won't be put into a trade on accident. So I'm going to sign into the paper trading. So this is basically like demo trading or fake money allows you to practice on trading view. It is a very, very great feature. I think everyone should use it. Everyone should become profitable trading with paper trading before they ever go into a live broker. So I'm just going to connect. So remember, I don't have this toggled on. So when you don't have this toggled on, if I wanted to buy right now, or let's say I wanted to sell right now, if I wanted to sell, now I can place all my 
um, numbers in, right? So I can place like a take profit. If I wanted to have a take profit, I would just find the level that I wanted it to be. So let's say I wanted it to be at 5334.75, right? 5334.75, right? And I wanted a stop loss to be at 5338.25. Right. So let's say this is like a trade that I wanted to take. So right now I would be profiting eight ticks and losing six ticks if it was a, if I got stuff. You can also calculate your risk based off the percentage or the USD risk or percentage balance, right? So there's a lot of different ways that you can calculate your risk, or you could just do the US dollar amount that you want to lose. So let's say for percentage of balance, let's say I only wanted to lose 1% on this trade, right? Well, if I only wanted to lose 1%, then this is telling me that I don't even have enough to place the trade, right? So let's say I wanted to lose 3% on this. Still not enough to place a trade in here, right? So let's say USD risk. Let's say I was comfortable losing $500 on this trade. Then I can place a trade for four units, right? So let's say, let's get into this trade, right? This is not a good trade. It's not financial advice. Don't trade like this. I'm just trying to show you guys how you can place a trade right so boom i hit sell now my stop loss is in the market and my take profit is also in the market right so if price was to come down to this level it will automatically take me out the trade or vice versa if price was to come up to this level it will also automatically take me out for the trade and you can see the loss and the win now like i said this is not a good trade example i'm just trying to show you guys how you can hit the button and get into trades and get out of trades, right? So, because ideally you always want this number to be lower than this number. And ideally you want this number to be two times whatever this number is. That is how we trade. That is the model that I'm going to teach you guys in the future is do not take a trade if this number cannot be at least two times whatever this number is. And when I say that, I'm basically talking about if you were to get in without spread, right? So you want to always factor in spread. But when I'm talking about the risk, because what I'm talking about is the risk to reward ratio, the one to two RR. If that is not two to one, then you do not want to take the trade. But that will be more explained when we go more into depth about the model itself, right? So now let's say you wanted to take partials, right? because we have four contracts in the market. Let's say when it gets to here, you want to take out two, and then you want to leave your final two for here, right? The way you would do that is because we sold here, so you would put a buy limit, and we're going to change this to two. And let's say you wanted your buy limit to be at 5335.5, right? And let's change it to limit, and it's going to be 5335. Point five, right? Let's say that is where your limit was. All you would do is hit buy, and now you have a buy limit of two. Well, let's change that. Leave it there. So if price was to go down here, then it would take you out for two, leaving the other two for right here. Vice versa, if you were selling up here, let's say as price started to go up, you want to get out of two contracts here, and then if it keeps going higher, take you out fully on the entire trade once it gets up here the same way you would do that is you would put a buy stop now so this was a buy limit if you're putting it above the market it's always going to be a buy stop so let's say your buy stop was at 5337.5 right so it'll be 5337.5 so that is where your buy stop would be so this if price was to go up here it would take you out two and then the final two would be up here and so now we're just going to watch and see what happens. Like I said, this isn't a good trade idea. This is just showing you how the buttons work and how you can get in and out of trades. And so while we wait to see what this trade does, let's talk more about the other different things that we can do with trading view. So going back to this trading tab, we have the position, right? So if I toggle this off, this will show me where I this shows you what got in and out of trade. So this is only if you have an active trade open. So as you can see, this is the level that I got in on the trade. So when I toggle that on and off, it shows like that. Now for profit loss, that would be here. Now I can change that to money. I can change that to the amount of ticks that I'm in profit or not in profit. 
or I could change it to the percentage based off my account if I'm in profit or not in profit, right? So we're going to change that back to money. Now we have the reverse button. So this, if I hop uh, over this, this would just be my position. So let's say I was short and I realized I was wrong and it's probably going to go a lot higher. I can just easily reverse my position from a short position to a long position, cover the difference based off whether you were in profit or not, and it will change your position. Now we have orders. This is basically going to be any limit or stop orders that you have in the market. So if I toggle it on and off, you see it on now, it only shows my position, but it doesn't show stop losses or take profits or any limit or stop orders. So now toggling that back on, it'll show it right there. And then executions, this is just showing where you either got in and got out of the market. So when I toggle that on and off, it shows you I shorted in this candle at this price, right? And so now we see it getting close to that buy stop. Like I said, remember, this was not a good trade idea. It is simply just showing you how limit orders, stop orders, market orders, take profits and stop losses, how all of that works and how you can use TradingView to get in. So now you can see now it took me out of two contracts once it hit that limit order, leaving a remaining two here. So if it was to go all the way up here, then they will take me out of two contracts there. So as we continue to wait and see what happens, let's talk a little bit more about the other stuff that you can do on TradingView. So, oh, well, there we go. So now we are fully out of the trade. So now when you have limit orders for your partials, you want to make sure that you close them out because let's say you're out the trade, right? But let's say price starts to go down. If it goes down to here and you haven't closed out the limit order, then it will activate the limit order and you will go long once it goes here. So we're going to close that. And now we're fully out the trade. You can see the executions. It was within this candle at these individual prices. So now moving on, that's pretty much it for the trading tab. Now, this is pretty straightforward. If you're taking screenshots and you want the orders, the executions and positions to show up, then you just simply toggle this on. But now moving on to events, I don't use this at all. I don't care about any events. Um, when I'm looking for economic news, which we'll learn about, I am looking at the economic calendar on either forex.com or econoday.com. And so that is it for the chart settings. Now let's actually remove the execution tab. And now let's move on to the top tab, right? So I already talked about this one. This is just another way to get to the chart settings. Now, this is how you can have different layouts, right? So I have a layout for like index futures. So I have all my index futures on this layout. I have layouts for currencies. I have layouts for other asset classes. There's a lot of different reasons why you can have different layouts and there's, you can customize it any way you want to. So you can have certain indicators show on certain layouts. You can have certain layouts with different colors. There's so many different ways and different reasons why you would want to have different layouts, but this is how you would do that. Now, if you wanted to have two charts, two charts, same layout, you would do that here. So right now I only have one chart showing, but if I was to click on two or three or four or five, and right now, like I said, I only have the premium membership. So it allows me to go up to eight. You can have as many charts as you want. So if I click two, you can see now let's remove all the drawings. So a way you can remove all the drawings easily is you right click, go to object tree and all those drawings will show. And you can just click on all of them and hit delete. And then now all the drawings are gone. So right now, I have crude oil and the S&P showing. If I wanted to have three charts showing, now I have the S&P crude oil and the Dow Jones showing. Now, as you notice, these charts look a little different. All you have to do is just change the settings on the third one. You only have to do it one time. Once you change it, it'll save forever and all the charts will look the same. Now let's go back to two. Now some cool things with this. You can sync certain features within the layout so you can sync the symbol. So if I click this, both symbols will always be the same. If I have the interval clicked, it will always be on the same time frame. So you see how this is on the five minute chart. So even if I switch, so let's say I go to a 15 minute chart, it'll switch both of them at the same time. You can also have your crosshair showing. So you can see the crosshair showing on both charts. So I can be lined up on the same time, the same candle at all times. 
you can have the time um, the same as well. So let's say I'm looking at the S&P for the 23rd. You see how the crude oil is also going to the same date that I'm looking at. So that is what, that's what I have the time interval checked. And then lastly, we have the data range. So if I zoom all the way out, it will zoom out equally as I did on the first one. If I zoom all the way in, it will zoom in equally as it did on the first one. So that is pretty cool that you can do that in trading view. And now moving on, we have this replay tab. So I'm gonna go back to one, which is pretty cool. It allows you to back test. So basically if I click on this and I hover over any candle, whatever candle I click on, it will delete all the candles to the right. So if I click over here, now all the candles to the right were deleted. So it allows me to go back into price action and study it and learn and hopefully create my own model, right? So that's pretty cool. You can also buy and sell while you're doing in the um, replay mode. So you can practice getting in and out of trades. Now it's not gonna be identical to being in live conditions, but it's very, very close and you learn a lot. In fact, everyone starts in this phase. Before you can even have a model, you have to back test and learn from old moves, old price data. And so now let's get out of the replay tab here. This is another way that you can add alerts. So remember, you can do it by right clicking. You can do it if you had the plus button in your settings toggled. And now you can also do it here. And then here, indicators is how we add indicators, right? So what are indicators are basically tools to help you make decisions in trading. So right now you see this number six. This is showing that I have six indicators on this chart. Now they're not showing because I have them all hidden except one actually. But the only indicators I use are just indicators to help me tell time and certain levels better. I'm not really using the indicators to get into a trade. The indicators is just plotting something that I would personally do manually anyway. So like for example, I this week and day separator. So this separates the individual weeks and the lighter blue or blue lines separate the individual days. Now, before I had this indicator, all I would do is just plot a line on each individual day and each individual week. Now I just have the indicator that can do it for me automatically. Now I'm not using indicators to be like, you buy here, not buy here. Like I'm not using indicators and in the hundreds and thousands of indicators out there. I'm simply just using simple ones to show very specific price levels and very specific times of the day. Now I also have a session for futures. This is basically all the times that I would personally get into a trade in the futures market. And then I have it also for Forex. So if this was a Forex pair, this would be all the individual times that I have for Forex as well. And then I have the weekday separator for Forex and I have the weekday separator for futures. The only reason why I have that is for some reason, I don't know why, but these, um, these two I selected. I had to play around with the settings a little bit to make sure that it was always at 12 a.m., whether I was in the futures market or Forex market. So I had to create two separate ones because of that. But the day always starts at 12 a.m. no matter what. And then I have this cool indicator that was made by Two Degrees. Um, they're a pretty cool company. You guys should go check them out. They make very, very nice tools. First one is just a power of three tool. So if I double click on it, and let's say I change this to the daily chart, right? What it's going to do once it loads is now it's showing me the last five days. So the candles on the last five days. So I don't have to keep toggling back and forth between the daily chart and a lower time frame chart. So I can see multiple charts now within one thing, which I thought was pretty cool uh, tool that they made. And then this one is just a gap. So... I know you guys haven't learned all the key levels and stuff, but this is one of the key levels that I talk about, which is basically just a gap and it plots it with this um, gray line or box. But I'm not going to get too in depth with it because that is for the key levels video when we talk about gaps and all the other different types of key levels. And so that is it for the indicators. Now let's talk about the time frames. So these are all the time frames that I have selected as my favorites. Um, all I basically do is if I click this down, if you put a star next to it, it'll pop up up here. So if I take the star off the one minute, it goes away. If I put it back, 
it'll show up. So these are all the time frames that I personally use on a daily basis. So that is why I have these starred so I can easily go back to it. But to be honest with you, I personally don't even use this tab as much. I just type on the keyboard. So if you're clicked on the chart and you just type in 15, it will automatically take you to the 15 minute. Now, let's say I want to do 15 second. All I do is 15 S and it'll take you to the 15 second chart. Now, I just remembered, I forgot to mention this. Another cool thing about the premium membership is that it allows you to look at the second chart. So if you're going to be a scalper, one of the models that I teach, is, that I teach requires you to use the second chart. So if you are going to use that model to trade, then you probably want to become a premium member. However, I teach other models where you do not need the second chart. So like I said, it's not needed to make money in this industry. But if you want it to change it to the second, just put an S. If you want it to be 15 week chart, just put a W, 15 month. Well, you can't do a 15 month on here, but let's say you want to do one month, it'll be one M. And if you want to do one day, my bad, you just put the D for day. So that's it for the time frames. And now lastly, let's go over the different tools. So I'm not going to go over every individual tool. Feel free to go through them. I'm just going to go through the ones that I personally use and see how I starred these. So when you star your favorites, it's going to have a toolbar at the bottom so that every time you want to use a tool, you don't have to go over here, find it, click on it, and just makes it quicker and easier. You can just click on the tool down here. Um, one thing to know about this side before I go to the toolbar is I always have this toggled. The reason why I have this toggled is when you click on a tool and you want to anchor it to like a high open close whatever it'll automatically do it once you get within the area and you don't have to make sure it's perfectly lined up every time it'll automatically snap to the high low open or close of the candle and so let's go over the first tool that i use this one's pretty simple it's just a vertical line so if you click on it and anywhere you click it'll just plot a vertical line now with every tool you can change the color this way. You can change the thickness of the tool. You can change the style of the line. Um, there's a lot of different things you can do with each tool. You can add an alert to a tool. So if price, in this case, it's a vertical line. So let's say you had it out here and you wanted to know when 930 came. So once price gets to 930, you can create an alert. And as soon as price gets there, you'll get the alert to your device. Now, if you want to get more in depth with the settings you can either double click on the tool or you can click the settings button here and once you do that it'll bring you up to this so you can add text to the tool so let's say i wanted to say um 9 15 start and plot it here now you can change the text alignment to wherever you would like it to be you can change the font size you can make it bold italicized a lot of different things you can do um if you want to change the coordinates of it you can do that as well to get very precise and then you can also change the visibility. So let's say you only want this line to show up on a five minute chart. You would untoggle all of these and then change this number to five. So it would only show on a five minute chart or less. If you want it to only be the five minute, then you just untoggle this, change this to five. And now it'll only show on the five minute, which is why it's not showing. So if I only wanted it to show on the 15, now it's only showing on the 15 minute chart. So that's it for vertical line. You can also do a horizontal line. Very simple. Plots a horizontal line. Let me actually move this. You can do a array, horizontal array, and it just plots the array. Now you see how it's snapping to the high, low, open, close. That's because I have this toggle. It makes it much easier when you're drawing on your chart. So let's delete that. Now we have a rectangle. Same thing here. Very cool. Then we have trend lines. Now I don't use it for the classic trend lines that you can do. I'm usually just trying to mark something and I don't want the line to show all the way throughout the chart. I just wanted to show for a certain period of time. And a way that you can easily um, straighten up the line is if you hold shift. So I'm about to click shift right now. It automatically straightens the line, which is pretty cool. And then we have the trend based fib extension. I don't really use this that much. I used to use it a lot. Um, so I'm going to skip this one. I Hardly, I can't remember the last time I ever used it. I probably need to take it out my favorites, but I do use this fib retracement every single day, <laughs> every single time a day. Um, this might be number one use tool and it just helps you measure ranges without you having to do the math yourself. So it isn't telling me to get in a trade or get out of a trade. There is 
no tool that tells you to get out the trade. It's just helping me highlight certain areas of price that I'm looking at. And that goes for every tool. So basically, if I click on the tool and I start from this low to this high, um, it's just going to measure certain ranges, right? So if I double click on it, and what I'm going to do is show levels instead of the price, or I'm show levels and prices and hit OK. So right now, that exact I have is from low to high. This is 0.5 of that range or 50% of that range. So half of the range from low to high. This is 61.8% of the range, 70.5% of the range, and 79% of the range. Um, the reason why I have these numbers, they might seem very random, but they're not random at all. The algorithm that we're going to learn about likes to refer back to these levels um, very, very often. Is one of the fibs, fib settings that I have. Now, I have many different settings and I have many different templates. And the way you do that is if you click here, and this applies to every tool, you can have different templates. And you can see I have so many different templates. I'm not going to get into depth about the different templates because you got to have some more knowledge on trading, which we're going to learn. But this is basically how you save a template. So let's say I wanted to save this template. All I would do is hit save drawing as, and then you can type the name and save it as that. So like one template that I have is the MMX. I'm just going to double click on it and show the levels. The reason why I don't have the levels is I know based off the color what they are. But basically this is just 20 to 30% of that range, 50% of that range, and 70 to 80% of that range. As you're going to learn, the market more times than not is going to use these three levels as the levels that it refers back to almost all the time. I'm just going to leave it at that because, like I said, there is more knowledge that needs to be taught before you can fully appreciate and understand why these percentages are important. But that is basically how I use the FIB. It's just to measure certain ranges and look for the areas of price that I'm interested in looking at. So now moving on to the next tool, we have the long and short position. So let's say you wanted to go long here and this just helps you manage your risk and you wanted to put your stop loss here and your take profit here. And let's say if you double click on it, change the settings. Let's say for your trading, you only want to risk $250. You don't want to lose more than $250 on your account. You have a thousand dollar account size, which if you have a thousand dollar account size, you should not be risking $250. That is way too much. So let's say you had a $10,000 account size. Still probably too much, but let's just do that for easy math, right? And let's say you're trading the S&P 500. If you were to enter at this price, so if we look at the right side of the chart, it tells you the price levels of the take profit, the entry price, and the stop loss. If you were to enter at this price and your stop loss is here, then you can only risk 1.25 because this is the futures market and there aren't any quarter contracts. You're only risking like one contract, two contract, three contracts, so on and so forth. You can only risk one contract and stay within that $250 range. It also tells you that risk to reward ratio. So remember I was saying you don't want to take a trade if this number isn't at least um two. You want to double whatever you risk. So in this case, it would be 2.69. So if you were to take the trade there, then that would be a 2.69 risk to reward. So you would get 2.69 more than what you risk before factoring in spread and commissions in this case. And then the same goes for short position, just showing you the opposite way. Um, another cool thing that I also didn't show you guys is let's say, and, and this is really cool, just specific to trading view. Let's say you had this trade here, right? Stop losses here, yada, yada. If you click on it, you can just hit create limit order and let's, cause I don't want to actually get in the trade. So let's right click and let's say you want it to enter in this trade, right? And you didn't want to do, cause remember if you click here, you have to like type in all the numbers and do all that, right? If you already have this set up, you can right click, hit create limit order, hit buy, and it automatically does it right away. It's actually a really cool feature that saves a lot of time with trading view but I'm going to cancel this. And now let's move on to the next tool, which is the text box, pretty straightforward. You can just type on the chart, let's delete that. And then this one's just the an anchor text. So it will always stay in the same position of the chart, 
no matter where you move the chart after putting it on there. So if I had text here and I was moving, see how it, it doesn't move at all versus if I had this here and I move it, that stays there versus this one. So there's different uh, uses for each one. Sometimes one's better than the other. So that's why I have both favorited. Then we have the data range. So this is just going to tell you how many candles from here to here and how much time was spent between that range, which is pretty cool. Then we have arrows, pretty straightforward. It's just gonna plot the arrow on the chart. So if I wanted to put, it, to put the arrow here, it'll just plot the arrow and then the other way for a down arrow. And then we have the eclipse tool which you can highlight certain like highs and lows. So let's say I wanted to highlight that, I would just do it that way. And then we have the brush tool, which just allows you to draw on the chart. And then lastly, once you're signed into your account, um, you can see all different numbers. So like orders, history, account history, yada, yada, all the stuff, right? And remember, this is the paper trading account. This is, I can't even why I took these trades. I'm probably either teaching someone or showing someone something. So like, for the trade that I just showed you guys, that was 225 plus 150. Because remember, it took us out two different times. So if you add that, that was the on that account. It shows the account balance and the equity. Um, but like I said, this is just probably me trying to teach someone. And none of these trades are real. Because if it's a real trade based off my model, I'm not taking it in a paper trading account. I'm taking it in a real account. So don't look at these big wins or I guess... To someone, it's probably big. To someone, it's probably small. But don't even look at the wins because these wins don't matter. And definitely don't look at the losses because the losses don't matter. It's not real money. So that is pretty much it for the TradingView tutorial. I hope you guys found it insightful. Um, I hope you guys have a better grasp of how to use TradingView and all the different features that they have. But make sure that you go around and you play with it and tweak it to what you would like. And without any further ado... Let's move on to the next video in this course.